Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day. Let's get into this video. Life is getting back to normal. The masks are starting to come off. Everything, for the most part, is open back up. And now there's a temptation to buy things that you see in person. And there's the temptation of ordering online because that was pretty much the only option we had for a while. Having frugal living habits takes away those temptations in the best way possible because these frugal living habits I'm about to go over with you right now are going to do so much more than help you save money. They're also going to make it easy for you to save money without you even having to think about it, even while you're enjoying life. Because I truly believe that frugal living doesn't just have to be this boring thing you do while you sit home all day watching paint dry. So with that, frugal living habit number one is actually a two-step habit, but I think you can appreciate it. Whenever you want to buy something for yourself outside of your rent, gas, or groceries, wait one week before buying it. You might want a pair of Ray-Bans that cost a little over $100. You might want some beach attire, you know what I'm saying? It's getting a little toasty outside, low key. Speaking of, you might want to get some skincare products that protect you from the sun. These things aren't cheap, yet they're marketed to you as if they're something that you need right now. The simplest way of getting around this is realizing that you've already went a while without any of these things, whether that was a few months or maybe a year or more. So knowing that, you can definitely wait a week to see if you even want it. Because you might not even be feeling those Ray-Bans after a week. You might find something that's more affordable and that suits you better. You ever notice how you never really see things until you realize you want them? Like, if I see a really nice Corvette outside and all of a sudden I want a Corvette, that's all I'm going to see from here on out. No matter where I go, all I'm going to see is Corvettes. And my point with that is this. Corvettes have a ton of different models. Some are on the cheaper side, while some are way expensive. It's the same thing with those Ray-Bans I was just talking about. And as you wait a week, I promise you, you will see more selections, more brands, and more prices. Now, after that week goes by, you still might be like, nope, I still want them. And that's cool. If you want them and you, it's been a week and you have the money for them, then go ahead and buy it. Here's the second step of this habit, though. That's the only thing you buy yourself for the whole month. What you're doing here is you're limiting the amount of things you buy yourself every month. So it really gets you thinking, is what I'm buying really worth it? Like, do I really want this? And a lot of times it's not worth it. I don't know about you, but me personally, I don't really buy myself things that often because I really don't have that desire. Like, sure, I bet you can afford to buy yourself more than one thing you want every single month, but you have to really ask yourself, is there a specific purpose for it? Or do you just want to have it just to have it, wear it a couple of times and be done with it forever as it collects dust in your closet? And I just want you to see with the extra money that you're able to save just by thinking like this, you'll be able to put that extra money towards something that falls better in line with your goals and your dreams in life. You use that money to make more money for you, which we'll talk about in just a minute, or you could use that money towards an experience or a place that you've always wanted to go, or you could just use that money for a rainy day. But the point of this first habit is to limit your temptation by only allowing yourself to buy one thing for yourself a month. And if you realize you don't really want anything, then you can use that money for something else. See, what I realize is this, it's all emotional at first, especially if you go out to the mall or something with your friends, AKA bad influences, you might get urged to buy a jacket or some designer clothes. You like it, your friends know you like it, and they know you can afford it. But delay that thought for a week, I guarantee you won't be thinking about no designer clothes. Bro, you don't even be wearing no designer anything, so why is it now that you want designer clothes? Exactly. Moving on, so I actually just kind of hinted at this habit a second ago, and this is one of the most important habits any adult must master. The problem is, a lot of us find this very difficult to do, but if only more people figured out how to do this, they'd have a lot more money in their pocket and they'd have a much clearer mind. The habit is being alone, and I've mentioned this before, but not like this. This goes far beyond enjoying your own company, staying in and living under a rock, because let's face it, friends and even family can be bad influences when it comes to money. I mean, they'll gas you up to the point where you end up buying those designer clothes that you promised yourself you wouldn't buy. And they'll tell you very convincing stories like, you, you can afford it. You can afford it, bro. Go ahead and do it. Like they know your bank account. Like they know your money better than you or something. I'm telling you, bro, people out here be trifling. But that's not what I'm talking about today. That's actually baseline. Don't get me wrong. Being alone is a great way to save money. But it's even greater when you realize that you can actually make more money being alone. And I'll tell you exactly how. Let me ask you a question, bro. Have you ever had plans to like be productive or take care of something only for your friends, a girl you like, or maybe a significant other just pop up out of nowhere wanting to do something with you? Maybe they just want to go out somewhere and have a good time. And I can give you a range of different scenarios from the club, hockey games, football games, parties, dinner, the pool, 
blah, blah. You've heard it all before, right? But if you're anything like me, you probably are guilty of dropping everything you were about to do just to be with other people. Am I right? Mm-hmm. I sure did. Yep, that's right. Y'all better listen to him. But I'll cut y'all some slack because that was me too. But y'all can't be doing that. I know we're social creatures and sometimes we feel the need to be around people. But having a good time or just being in the presence of someone that you're fond of should never take priority over your life. I've had times where I've had big tests to study for in college or a big project to do only for my friends to hit me up last minute wanting to hang out, wanting to go out somewhere or wanting to play video games or something. And there were times I would drop everything and go with them. And that, my friend, is how I went from a 3.6 GPA to a 2.7 in a single semester. That woke me up and I was like, Reggie, you can't be out here with all of this foolishness. You got to be about that work. See, it's all about balance. Look, bro. This hit me so hard. I was out here having a low-key existential crisis over some grades because I didn't have my priorities in order. That conversation I had with myself and that pressure that I put on myself, that turned me into a standout student. It got me back up to a 3.6 GPA and it opened so many doors. I'm talking internships, high-paying jobs, promotions, everything. But the difference is I woke up. Some people didn't. I've seen the lack of wanting to be alone destroy people to the point of taking them so far away from their goals, whether that goal was to graduate from college, which in this case, this one guy loved partying and being around friends so much that he dropped out of college, actually flunked out of college. That's not a shot at him. That's literally what happens. But I've also seen people lose their jobs prioritizing other people over themselves. And the people they were putting above themselves, their own well-being, and their financial future, frankly, didn't matter. And I'm not even talking about friends or family. I'm talking about calling off of work because your girlfriend is sick or she's feeling lonely. And y'all know jobs don't be playing that calling off mess. So then you mess around and call off too much because of this girl. Then you mess around and lose your job. Now you're looking sick. And to top it all off, the relationship doesn't even last. Ask me the amount of times I've seen that. Matter of fact, we're not even going to go there because you wouldn't believe me anyway. So, just remember, your life, your purpose, your financial future, your goals, your mental health are all more important than just dropping everything to be with other people. Some people call it selfish, but let me tell you about people who say that. They care more about their own benefit than yours, which ironically makes them selfish. Now, before I move on to the extremely important, powerful habit that I didn't even realize was powerful, I'm going to say this. The fear of being alone, not wanting to look lame, and constantly needing to be around others affects your confidence in a bad way. And it makes your success reliant on others. And people can read that because it gives off a certain energy about yourself that's basically walking around with a sign on your head that says, I'm needy. And people will take advantage of that, which will waste a lot of your time, which you know can also waste a lot of potential money you could be making. Know your worth know your value. If you know in your mind that you got stuff to do today and someone wants to randomly hit you up and do something or hang out or whatever, you got to be able to tell them, hey, I got something going on. I can't today. People are going to respect that a lot more than someone who just drops everything every chance they get to hang out with somebody. And if they don't, they're probably not your real friend anyways. Because here's the thing, people respect boundaries. And you may think that being open all the time and being available all the time makes people like you more, but honestly, it just kind of makes you a pushover. Let me stop before I go another two hours on this topic. Obviously, mastering the skill of being alone is something I'm very passionate about. Anyway, here's the extremely powerful, slept-on habit that I've been underestimating for years. Think about the future when it comes to your money. It's no fun to just randomly deprive yourself of the things that you know you deserve without having any reasoning behind it besides just saving money. What happens a lot of the time is when someone decides to live a frugal lifestyle, they end up going bare bones, they start clipping coupons, and second-guessing every purchase they make. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but literally if you just spent your money intentionally, you would never have to put yourself through that. Look, with everything you buy, there needs to be a reason. With everything you don't buy, there has to be a reason. See, there's a lot of advice out there that says, hold off on the Starbucks coffee, never eat fast food. And just like I said in my last video, you don't got to do all that. You don't have to deprive yourself to that extent. All you got to do is have a plan for your future. When it comes to buying the Starbucks coffee and the fast food or whatever else, moderation is good. Excessively buying anything is bad which means you really just need to draw out a financial plan. I know that can sound intimidating, but look, the best, simplest way to think about it is this. You simply get real with yourself and say, where am I at now 
versus where I want to be financially. And if you want to get started with that, I have a ton of other videos that go over how to do just that. And I'll go ahead and link it up here, the one that I think covers it the best. But when I say think about the future when it comes to your money, that isn't just about spending money. It also is deeply embedded in what you do every single day. The time you spend learning something right now, it's for tomorrow, it's for the future. The reason you're watching this video right now is for the future. The reason you get out of bed every morning and go to work is to sustain your lifestyle. And it's also for the future because I'm sure you want to retire at some point. Or maybe you're like me and your income from your job is fueling a dream of yours, a business. Maybe you want to buy a nice car. Look, I don't care what you want to spend your money on. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to help you get there. This channel is all about making the most out of the money that you have right now. It's about showing you the strategies that make saving money and making more money easy for you. So you can go out there and spend money at your own leisure without really having to worry about suffering any consequences. We all work super hard for our money and we all have to bring some sort of value to consistently make money. So why shouldn't we be able to buy what we want to buy? That's the end goal. Once the debt is paid off, once the responsibilities are taken care of, once you have excess money, that's when you can buy what you want to buy without having to suffer any consequences. The discipline I teach, the online coaching services that I have, the online courses that I'm developing will get you that discipline which is going to build those simple habits that make saving money and making money easy. Shameless plug. And once you've earned a certain amount of extra money and you start to invest it and then you start to continue the cycle and just repeat it over and over again, you'll have more money than you ever have before, which means more options. And all I want to do is show you how to be smart with your money despite the amount of options that you have because that's where a lot of people mess up at. I hope what I just said gave you a visual of what your dream life looks like or what you want to be able to buy in the future, where you want to go, what you want to do without having to sweat or second guess your decision, without having to worry about how much credit card debt you'll be in after all this because you've built the steps into your habits to live frugally. That's why it's important to think about the future when it comes to your purchases and when it comes to what you do in your everyday life. And those, my friend, are the frugal living habits that you can start right now so you can get on the right track to living the life you've always wanted to live. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.